Okay, so GitHub. GitHub is an online, basically, Git hosting website. It basically gives you an online server where you can push a copy of your changes. Um, so you can do all the things we just did, but when you're done, you can essentially save them to GitHub. And then you can get on another computer and you can copy your changes down there. So it's kind of like Dropbox, but it all works with Git instead of, you know, dragging files to your file tree. GitHub allows you to create free accounts. Um, when you create a free account on GitHub, it's publicly available. So I actually pay GitHub some money, and that's why you see these blocks here. So I have some private ones, but with just the free account, you can only have public ones. That's fine for a lot of things. I mean, obviously, everything you don't want to be public, but if you have projects you don't mind making public, then this is a good option. You can also, if you send, if you search like GitHub for students, you can, if you have a .edu email address, you can like fill out a form and they'll give you two free years of having private repos. There's other services like this. Um, so there's Bitbucket would be the other big one. It's very similar to GitHub, but they also, if you're a student, they'll give you free hidden directories. There's multiple services. GitHub's probably the biggest, but the things we're doing with GitHub, it's pretty much the same for any of these other services. So what we're gonna do on GitHub is let's take these Git repositories we just created and let's actually upload them to GitHub. So the first step to doing that is we need to create a new repository on GitHub. So if you have a GitHub account, log in and follow along. If not, I guess you can watch. I mean, or you can create a GitHub account very quickly. The first thing creating an account is you need to make a repository name. So this is just my, I'm just going to call it git demo. But you can call it whatever you want. You can give it a description if you like, that's fine. Uh, if you're not paying, your only option will be public. You won't be able to make it private. I could, but I'm going to make it public. Uh, and then there's some options here. So I could initialize this repository with a readme. If I were making a new repository from scratch, I would probably do that. That just basically creates a readme for me. But I actually want to take the Git repository that we've been playing with on my computer and push it up, so it already has a readme. So I don't need another one. It's also capable of basically using a pre-generated Git ignore. So they have Git ignore files here for like a bunch of common languages and all the things you would normally ignore when you're programming in that language. So you're welcome to use these. I always write my Git ignores from scratch, but those are there should you like to use them. So I'm just going to ignore both of these. I'm going to go create a repository. And once it's created, GitHub's going to be helpful, and it's essentially giving me two options. It's saying, if I want to create a fresh repository, follow these. You will note that this is fairly similar to what we did before, right? If you went into a directory, they changed the order they created a readme and then did get an it. We did get an it and then a readme. But this is basically going through everything up until this point is just creating a new Git repository. We've already done that. So we can essentially follow these instructions, which just skip these first four steps and just run these. So Git has what's called remotes. A remote in Git is basically another Git site. So thus far, I've only been working on our computer, but now we want to say GitHub is a remote. I could also be remote, right? We could, it would require a little bit of cleverness with SSH, but you guys could essentially, sitting on your computers there, list my computer right here as a remote if you knew my IP address, some little details like that, and then you could push changes directly to my computer here. GitHub's kind of acting as the centralized location that's easier to facilitate because you don't know my IP address and my IP address changes and it's hard to push directly to someone's computer most of the time. So GitHub kind of fills the centralized single entity that everyone knows where it is so we can all kind of sync to there. So what we're essentially going to do is um, setting up GitHub uh, requires, I mean, if you already have a GitHub account, hopefully you've done this. When you create a GitHub account, it goes, it takes you through a getting started that basically involves, um, oh, I'm actually going to change this. So there's two ways to basically upload things to GitHub. There's the SSH method and the HTTP method. The HTTP method's easier, but you have to type in your GitHub password every time. The SSH method requires an extra setup on GitHub. You can find me afterwards, you're going to show you how to do that. I'm going to use the SSH because I've already set up GitHub to work with SSH for me. Um, if you attended the SSH lecture last week, it's basically up to give GitHub a copy of your private or your public key. Um, but you guys should probably just be using the HTTP unless you know GitHub has your public key, in which case SSH is a little bit easier. So either one of these will work. Just select one and it'll modify the instructions down here. So we need to run this command. So I'm going to copy that. So back here in my Git directory, I'm going to just do that git remote add. So the git command standard, remote saying I'm, this is a command that relates to another host. Add is basically saying I want to save some host. 
And this is just a name you can assign it. So origin, I'm basically going to call GitHub origin. I could call it Bob if I wanted to. But origin tends to be what you call kind of your, if you have a central repository like GitHub is, you tend to name it origin. It's just a convention. And then I'm going to give it the actual address. So for me, this is an SSH address. For if you were using HTTP, this would be HTTPS, something like that. But I can do that. And that command is going to run. Then if I go back here, I now need to do what's called a push. So when we start working with multiple entities now, there's a number of new git commands. So thus far, we've dealt with the commit command. So the commit command just operates locally. It's always on us. But now we also have, if this is us, we also have what's called a push, and we have what's called a pull. So a push and a pull basically pushes our most recent, well, I mean, so a push sends our most recent commits to someone else, a pull gets our most recent commits from someone else. Make sense? So commit, add, this kind of stuff, these are all local commands, but these are then remote commands. So what I'm saying is, do a git push. I want to push to origin, so I mean for bill, if I call this bill, right, this is whatever I label the GitHub origin, or the GitHub address. And then it's saying what I want to push. So we haven't got into this yet, but in Git you can have multiple branches. So essentially if you do start doing separate lines of development, you give them each labels. Right now we only have one line of development, and if you only have one, it's always called master by default. So we're saying I want to take my master branch, which is my only branch right now, and I want to push it to origin, which is GitHub. People clear? So I could have called this, if I were using this with like GitHub and Bitbucket, you can have multiple remotes, I could have done that. I would have, like, instead of calling this origin, I would have called this GitHub, and then if I, when I added it, do a new remote add for Bitbucket, I'd call it Bitbucket. But in this case, I want to push to origin, I'm going to do this command. It's going to ask me this. Ah, oh, and it failed, because I didn't actually do that thing I said I'd done. I'm going to fix this real quick. So again, if you're at the lecture last week, if you're using the SSH method, it's using your SSH public-private keys, and you basically have to give GitHub a copy of those. So this is in your, this is basically the list of all the computers that can push to GitHub for me. Again, I'm not going to dive into the details. You can watch last week's lecture, or you can hit me up afterwards, or you can ignore this altogether and just use the HTTP method. But if I do that, Steps. I'm just going to watch all of my authentication shenanigans. Gotcha. All right, now we're ready. Um, so I'm just going to repeat that last command again because mine failed. And this time it should succeed happily. Good. So if it works, if you're using the HTTPS method, it may be asking you right now for your GitHub password. Provide it, uh, because I'm using SSH, it doesn't ask me for that. Uh, but this worked, it basically said it pushed master from my local to master on GitHub. So now if I do a git status, it's not really gonna, nothing here has changed locally. But if we look at GitHub, so if I go back to GitHub, and if I go back to that repository, so I just created this repository git demo. And now we'll see all of the files that I have in Git locally are now on GitHub as well. Make sense? So now let's say, uh, let's say I have another computer that I want to work on these on, right? Um, I don't, so I'm just going to go to another directory on this computer, but the concept's the same. So I'm going to just go back to my top level directory. So all of my, thus far we've been in the My Project folder, we were working in there. But let's pretend I'm now on a new computer, and I want to essentially make a copy of this GitHub directory. So there's another operation called clone, which essentially makes a complete copy. So this is how you would start a new repository when you just want to copy it from an existing one. So clone would be you don't have a copy on your local machine, you want to get a copy on your local machine, clone is the first thing you do. You only run clone once for each, for each copy you want on your machine. 
then you use push and pull to update it after that. But if this were a separate computer, so say I went into the C cell or something and I wanted to pull down all of my code and start working on it there, or say we were teammates and we were collaborating. Um, so we won't get into this, but I could, if I go to the settings here, you'll notice it has this collaborators. I could essentially add any of your guys' get usernames. And because this is a public repository, you guys could go here right now, but you guys are going to be limited to this read-only access. If I add you as a collaborator, it'll unlock these additional buttons for you, and then you can uh, you would actually be able to push to it. So Git clone works either way, whether you have write access or not, but these pushes will only work if you have write access. Does that make sense? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna, and for your own repositories, you're always gonna have read access, right? So if you're not my teammate, if you're just yourself and you wanna clone this onto another machine. So I just wanna clone this into my, I'm just gonna clone it into my home directory. When you do a clone, it automatically creates a subdirectory and puts it all in there for you. So I don't have to pre-create the subdirectory like I did the first time I was creating it. So the command is git clone, and then I just need to copy that address. So I'm gonna just copy the SSH read write access for this. You'll notice it says cloning into git demo. Now if I do an ls, I have a new folder called git demo. And if I cd into git demo, I have everything that I have in demo. So the example is a little contrived because I've already had a copy on this computer, right? But if this were another computer, this is I use GitHub to essentially sync my code between all the computers I ever work on. 